Alrighty folks, want to welcome you back to another video from Yates Computers Tits and Reviews. Head on over, hit the subscribe now, take the chance, pause this video, stop this video, head on over, hit the subscribe button. Come on back over, because now, this is an area I've talked about a lot. A lot of subjects on this, a lot of videos on this already. But this is kind of a big wormhole, rabbit hole. This is the rabbit hole of rabbit holes. I have at least eight videos on this subject already. As simple as a network cable. Well now, things get a little bit more complicated other than those videos, is how do you make your own network cable? Nowadays, a lot of these cables are fairly cheap. You might not be even interested in making a cable. <coughs> you can buy one pre-done, three foot, five foot, 10 foot, 100 foot, you know, 200 foot run. Whatever you want to pre-order, you can do. Most of the time, the difference really is, is the boot and the connector at the end. There's some good advantages, some bad advantages. This is the booting, this is the connector. You can do all the same stuff with your own kind of connector. These are all the same cables. I don't have a shielded cable around for me to do testing and show you the difference. There's videos on shielding and unshielding. One of the factors that I have not shown is actually how to test the cables. I did not check the battery on that. There are lots of different kinds of testers. Of course the battery's dead because I don't ever use this. There is usually the fairly cheap kind of a tester. It'll go through and test each line and it lights up on this side. Line one will light up as line one. Line two lines up as light lights up line two. This is one of the issues that I told you if you're in far locations apart, you have to have someone on each side to see. Does it go from one to three to eight? What order it goes in? Because if it jumps or does not light up on that end, that means your connection's not good. There are new modern testing tools. Like these that you plug the cable into and it'll read each pair it has a little end there's a fancier model that can do coax cable there's one that you can have like eight 25 different connectors on this is good for a business for a corporation or a big building I kind of recommend it for everybody because if you run two or three cables in a run, you put those two or three cables on there, you plug the one end in to it, you hit test. When you test, it'll tell you if you pass, fail, if you have a cross, if you have an opening, if there's voltage on there. So if it's PoE, it'll tell you. If it's shielded, it'll tell you if it passed the shielding test. And it tells you the connector number. So you don't have to go through and mark each one and hope you mess it up. Don't mess it up. Well, this is line one, and this is line two, and hope you get it marked on the same side. This will tell you. The other tester would tell you too, but you might have to move it from one line, move it to the next line until it actually actively tells you. You don't have to run back and forth because if you want line one and you hook it up and it says you have line two, and it passes, you know line two is good. Okay, you mark that as line two, plug in the next one. Oh, that's line three. You're still looking for line one. Now, did line three actually pass? If line three passed, then your last line you have should be line one. You plug that in. If it passes, you're all good. And then you automatically know on the other end, one is one, two is two, and three is three. It don't really matter what the original run markings were. 
If you put adapter one on one and adapter two on two and adapter three on three, or whatever order you just randomly put them on, because they didn't mark them or whoever ran the cables didn't mark them or whatever, doesn't matter. You know by the tester. That tester, you can do the same. It's just a little bit more excessive work wise. You have to move it around and hope. And then if there's a bad connection, you don't know. The fancier model on this one has a way that you can test per pair of cables, the length. That's handy in a lot of business functions, a lot of buildings and stuff. Because if you have a problem with a cable, you can run a test on each pair on that cable and figure it out. Okay, you have a 30 foot run, and if it fails at 10 feet, where is that? Are you still within the room you're in, or are you up in the ceiling and somewhere else? Depending if you're testing from a wall jack, or if you're punching, testing from a punch panel through all the cabling from the punch panel up into the ceiling and all of that. If it tells you you're bad at 3 feet, it could be your original line you're using that's patched from the patch panel to your switch or to your server or wherever. It could be that original line that you just have to change. So you can actually pinpoint all of that easily. Then you can actually take that line off the punch panel, test that line independently and make sure that fails. Sometimes it is actually just not pushed into the punch panel right. It's just not seated right. Maybe you have to clean the pins. Maybe the connector is no good. So there's a lot of possibilities out there for testing cable and how to make cables. So this was kind of a rabbit hole subject that I did not go through a lot of. I talked about keystones, jacks, talked about the face plates. If you buy a face plate that has multiple holes, there are inserts to put into those so that the hole's not there. It has the one hole and it has a cover. If you ever want to run another line or you have another line you don't want to terminate, you don't want to put a keystone jack on there because you don't want anybody plugging in, or you put the keystone jack in there and it's still in the wall, you can cover it for future use. There's a lot, a lot of variables out there. So some of the tools I wanted to go through, of course, you have your testing tools. These are relevant and I consider them separately than your terminating tools. Because if you buy a cable online or somewhere else, you probably want to test it anyways. Make sure it's still good. Because the worst thing you want to do is go through all that effort of running that cable, getting it to where you want, hooking it all up, and then it fails. When you first get it in, test it, make sure the connections, everything are good to start with so that you know you didn't kink it, you didn't break it, you didn't do anything in that process. Maybe I've had them come in, brand new cables. I throw them on the tester and they fail. I measure how far they are, find out it's actually the cable, not the ends. They terminated the ends fine, but in the manufacturing of the cable or the storage, shipping or whatever happened to that cable in between that point a lot of places say oh they're tested and certified mm, i wouldn't believe that they put it on their little package with a sticker you know that's not tested there's no certified testing sheet to say that this cable and a cable number to this cable was actually certified and tested. I found them bad. Sometimes it's within a foot. I can cut it off, re-terminate it. We still have a good cable. Sometimes you just contact who you bought it from and say, hey, I got a bad cable and they send you another one and you throw that one away because they don't want it back because what is the cost of this? You're going to pay all this money to mount back and then they're going to be stuck with it and then they're going to be selling it in some bin auction or something else. That's no good and someone else is going to buy it and then they got a useless cable. 
most of the time it just gets trashed. So even pre-made cables, you want to test and make sure they're working. So then you get into all the different cable standards. I got videos on that. Cat 7, Cat 6, shielded, unshielded. One of these is Cat 5E and one of them is Cat 6. There's basically no difference that you can see from the outside. But there is a huge difference between Cat 6, Cat 7, and etc. up. And that is the wires inside. Cat 6 wires are bigger copper inside. So there are two major factors. I don't have any, unfortunately, Cat 6 ends. I've used them all. These are easy crimps where the wire goes through and you can match and verify on the outside what color code it is to make sure that you get it all the way terminated into the pins. There's a lot of videos on how to terminate cables. A lot of things out there that will show you. I use the easy crimps. I've been using them for a long time. But there is a difference between Cat 6, Cat 7. And the funny thing is, is this cable I bought, let's see what it is marked. This is actually a Cat 5 cable. Let's see. That must be 5E also. And that one should be shielded. I do actually have a shielded cable here that I can pull out. I was using for other things. And Basically, you can, eh, I'll leave it because I'm not going to do testing to show you a shielded te positive test. And, but here's a shielded cable. These ones I bought, I was testing, playing with. They're flat cables. Flat cables have not really been recommended because of the architecture of the cable and the color codes. How the cables are wrapped in between to cut down on interference. These are not wrapped that way. They're not twisted in the sheathing. That's why the cables are round. Because these cables go around and twisted. There's a difference there. So, I will be possibly changing these out here in the future to a rounded cable. They were dirt cheap, so I ordered them. They seem to be okay. And the difference is, is these were Cat 7. And the difference between Cat 7 and Cat 6 is shielding. They're shielding between each pair of wires. So that's a difference. So when you test your shielding, it's a different kind of shielding. Cat 6 can come shielded. It's an outside barrier of shielding. That will show up on here. I have not really tested shielded cable in this one. This is basically your tester that has a ground that might be for your shielded. I have not tried shielded cable in that tester. That was an old tester I had. Got this one to replace it. So I wanted to show a difference on this because there is a difference. If you order Easy Crimp Cat 6. This part here, where there's a little notch, isn't there. The wires slide all the way in. So, where this blue wire slides in, it would slide in even further. There's a reason why it's done that way. It's for the crosstalk and other factors that come up with the cabling. That the less cable you have untwisted, the less crosstalk and a loss a lot of interference that you would have. They slide in further. Also, the pin order is sometimes it's 
one up, one down, kind of because the wires are bigger to fit in that space. A lot of people say you can use Cat6 connectors on Cat5. Some people say you can use Cat5 on Cat6, depending on the wiring. I don't recommend it at all. There's a lot of factors and a difference between the wires inside and Cat5e and Cat6 are very different. There's little pins that get pushed in. These little gold pins get pushed in to terminate it. So it's a different thickness, different length, different width. A lot of different factors with those pins also. I'm sure it'll probably be okay, but why do it when you shouldn't? Follow the best procedures, best practices, and make sure your cables are good. So... I wanted to go through and actually show. This is the little crimping tool I have. And the difference between a standard one and this one, I have a standard one floating around somewhere, is it has a little cutting blade on the back that cuts off the wire. When you crimp it, it cuts off the wire at the end. That's the easy crimp style. And if you use punch panels or anything like that, you have your punch down tool. Now a punch down tool actually has two parts to it. It actually has more than that. It has a non-cut tool and it has a cut tool. On the tool it should actually be marked cut side and such and such so you can put it back in the right way. That's important when you punch down you want to make sure you cut on the outside of the keystone jack not on the inside or you're going to break the wires that make the connection it's been a while since i've opened that thing come on come on don't know if anybody really needs that anymore for the old old phone punch plates That's in the punch down tool. When you do keystone jacks, do those type of things. And of course, you can test a keystone jack with that. You hook a cable in, you hook your tester in, put your tester on the other side. If you have two keystone jacks, one on this wall, one on that wall, you put the wires in, the connecting in the test tool to the other wire, and you can test the loop. Knowing your color code. That seems to have your A and B color code that's been around for a while. There's some other color codes come out because they're more modern, more new. Uh, you know, 10 gigabit network, you know, those type of things. They have different color codes for it. And of course, you have your stripper. That will actually strip the cable off cutter and stripper on the tool so you can get to the wires on the inside. So that's basically a quick breakdown of it. But I wanted to go through and actually show you some of the tools and the testing of it. And why this is considered a rabbit hole is like things like this. There's a hundred different varieties, hundred different brands. Non easy crimp, standard. Now they make them for Cat 7 wiring and Cat 6, and cat, there's a lot of variables. Strippers, too, depending on the wiring. I have two or three different style strippers. I have just like the yellow ring thing that and it comes. I don't really use that one that much. Cutters. You always want to have cutters. You're going to need to cut the cables. Depending on the tool you buy, might not have a cutter on it. Wire strippers usually have a cutter on it that you can cut. But when you get into like Cat 6 or Cat 7 that's a heavier grade wire, you probably want to have a good wire cutter to cut through those wires because they're a little bit stronger and more finicky. 
a little harder to get through them. So this is what I wanted to cover. You have joiners. These I don't really recommend using because it's a failure point. It's a point where you're going to have interference, crosstalk, a lot of things because there's wires here that are not crossed properly and, and shielded and all of that type of stuff in here. And then you're going to run two connectors together that's going to make that even longer. Not to mention you have pins and other things that can get dirty and can get damaged. You want to stick with a solid line all the way. Same thing with kind of coax. You don't want to put couplers. You don't want to put a lot of things in between. But you have them in case you need them. If there's some old-fashioned lines there, maybe there used to be a switch. And three of those lines got taken away. And it's just the one line that now runs from the server all the way down to one workstation area. Or the switch got moved way down there and it's run off from there to other locations. You might need to do a couple or just to join them together so you could run that through. This is where all the rabbit hole issues are in cabling. That's why I have a lot of videos about making sure you match your cables too. You don't want to run a flat cable, shielded cable, into one of those joiners into a round cable. Of a different kind you're gonna end up with problems it's just bound to happen because of the interference how the signal runs through there and on the other end you're gonna have a, a calculation problem your packets aren't gonna arrive at the same time you're gonna have a lot of issues you're gonna have a lot of weirdness so wanted to point that out because you'll be doing testing you'll be doing a lot of things with that that to be aware of that if you see that note it that needs to be changed you need to change something over flat cable is not recommended so wanted to go through give you a basic testing video I'll probably end up doing a separate video on this tool that I have showing you all the features of that tool and again the tool i got is not the expensive tool it's the cheaper lower grade home grade tool if you buy the pro tool it has a few more options on it that are very very nice to have but i found this one at a good price so i picked it up and it suits most of my basic needs and that's all i really needed didn't need the professional tool for what I'm working on. But I might look around and find one later. Not to mean that you don't have to get, you don't need it or you won't want it. You might want it, you can get it. And if it's just a few dollars more, you might as well do it. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Head on over to Yates Computers Tips and Reviews. Again, this is the rabbit hole year. I know I've done a lot of networking videos, but I wanted to actually show you the tools and network. And because I've mentioned a lot of this, when you buy a pre-made cable, test it. This is what I mean by test it by using a tester, not plug it in and see if it's communicating. Because depending on how your network structure is, part of this year's quiz, again, your network, your cabling, all of these things come into play is you might be running a network situation where you're using two pairs of these wires and then want to upgrade to 10 gig, 5 gig, whatever, and you need all the pairs and you find out one of your pairs on your cable is no good or it just doesn't work and you don't know what happened. If you had tested all your cables before you installed it, you would know if all eight pairs worked. If you had one bad line of a pair, you would know and you could have resolved it then. And then you wouldn't have the issues you have. I've actually seen where they just don't terminate the other two pair. 
I don't know why, or they terminate three out of the four pair. You don't need that one. Yeah, don't worry about it. And then later on, it comes back to bite you, and you open up the Keystone Jack or whatever, and you go, why'd they do three pair instead of all four? Why'd they just do the two pair? They were taking the shortcut. You didn't need it. They got the job done in half the time because they terminated half the amount of wires. Not to mention, best practice, another reason why you terminate all those wires is to make sure those other wires don't come out. Those other wires help to hold it in. So there's lots of different reasons why you would want to test to know these factors before it's oops. And then you're spending a week running around with your head cut off because you thought it was capable. Well, it was. It is capable. Just somebody took a shortcut or you got a bad wire that showed up now that you're using all eight pair. PoE. There's one place that I've seen this will bite you. Active pair or unactive pair PoE. People will go, why is my PoE not working? Which one do you have? I mentioned before, I was shocked to find out this. I did not know there was two different PoEs. I thought it was all unactive pair. I didn't realize it was on your active wires or inactive. So when I would go check, I always check to check all eight pairs were working. I would find one of those pair, that pair was not working. That's why their POE wasn't working. But their network was. Their internet was working. All of that was working. It was working before they implemented whatever they were changing over to. And then figured out, why is the POE not working? Someone took a shortcut. Someone didn't just test to figure out, oh man, I have to go back to that punch panel, push that in a little bit more and get that working. They thought, that's not an active pair. I move on. So this is part of the testing. This is part of the rabbit hole thing. This can lead you into a whole eight videos of what wires run. Are you running the right wire? What grade wire? What? Cat 6, Cat 7, shielded, unshielded. That can lead you into a whole world of hurt that then you think, well, maybe I got too much interference and I need to run shielded wire. And you rip everything out, run shielded wire, spend thousands of dollars to put shielded wire in when all it really was is someone didn't terminate something right. Someone didn't test. So let me wrap this one up. Thank everybody for watching. There'll be a lot more videos to come, hopefully. So stick around, subscribe, tell people about it. Thank you.